Greetings to all. So for the first class in this set of lectures, we are going to start with simple harmonic motion. But before that, let me just give you an idea of what exactly we are going to discuss in detail. So the topic for the classes would be waves and oscillations. And that's the first part for this set of lectures. And in waves and oscillations, first, we need to understand certain things about motion and simple harmonic motion. So we are going to start with that. And before we start, let me just give you a very simple chart based on which you can actually have a basic idea of how can we divide motions into different parts. So if I talk about uh, motion, okay, it can be either non-periodic motion or periodic motion. So let me just uh, start with the basic idea of motion and the motion in general can be periodic or non-periodic right so let's just make this chart which will help you out to understand it, better. it can be periodic or it can be non-periodic so that's important and i will give you examples for each of these so that things becomes a bit more clear to you so it can be non-periodic or it can be periodic. So let's take up some examples of periodic and non-periodic motion. So you know the situation if it gets repeated after a certain interval of time, we can call it as a periodic motion. For example, if we just take up the example of uh, maybe a pendulum, right? If we take up the <laughs> example of a pendulum, this will be a good example of periodic motion because if you talk about the oscillations of the pendulum, it's going to repeat after a certain interval of time. So if I take up a pendulum and we have a pendulum and we are talking about the to and fro motion of a pendulum, it will move from one end to the other end and is going to pass through the mean position as soon as it goes the other side to come back to the mean position and go on the other extreme side and so on. So these kind of motions can be considered as periodic motion. On the other hand, if you're basically considering any kind of linear motion, that can be considered as more or less non-periodic in nature. For example, let's say I am basically having a space and I have a box here. And I'm pushing the box from one position to another. And we know that this box is not going to come back until and unless we apply an opposite force. So it's moving in one particular direction. And we can say that this is an example of a non-periodic motion. Also, you can take an example of maybe a ball which is rolling down downhill. That will be also an example of non-periodic motion. Now, if we talk about uh, the periodic motion, we can again divide it into oscillatory and non-oscillatory motion. Now let's try to divide periodic motion into two more kinds of divisions. And there, if one would be oscillatory and the other one would be non-oscillatory. So maybe I can write down here the non-oscillatory motion. Enhance it. Non oscillatory. So, if we're talking about a non oscillatory motion, it will be kind of different from oscillatory motion. So, I hope you get uh, the meaning of oscillatory motion because if I'm talking about a pendulum, that is a very good example of uh, periodic motion which is oscillatory in nature. So this example of pendulum that we have taken is a good example of oscillatory motion, which is periodic in nature. But then what is non-oscillatory? So a good example of a non-oscillatory motion can be circular motion. So if we're talking about the planet revolving around the sun, or maybe you have a string attached with a stone, and you are rotating it in circular motion, that's an example of non-oscillatory motion. An obvious question comes to mind, that what's the difference between oscillatory and non-oscillatory? 
motion both are periodic because you know if you are talking about the motion of let's say the planet earth around the sun it will come to a particular position the same position rather after a time period of 365 days so that's periodic in nature if you talk about the swing of the pendulum you are going to see the swing repeat after a certain interval of time it will pass to the mean position after a definite period of time so that's again periodic. but when we talk about a pendulum the motion is to and fro is going to go and come back to the mean position again going to the other position and is going to come back to the mean position well in case of non oscillatory motion there is no such option of coming back so we can say that non oscillatory is different from oscillatory in terms of the to and fro motion that we are considering so planet is going to revolve in one particular direction maybe clockwise maybe anti clockwise okay but in pendulum is going to go in one direction come back and pass through the mean position again so that's the major difference between oscillatory and non oscillatory motion now let me come to something very important and uh, we can divide the oscillatory motion further into shm and non shm motion so let me again uh, you know take up an example let's divide the oscillatory motion into two more sections so oscillatory motion again can be shm or not shm so maybe i can write it down and by shm we mean that it's simple harmonic motion so simple harmonic motion and at the same time it can be non shm as well so this is something which is very basic this is important we need to understand certain things here and when i talk about shm i have already told you an example about the pendulum and that's a good example of shm motion but going further i would like to give you an example of another kind of motion which you might have studied which is also a very good example of shm and the example is that of a box attached to a spring so let me search for a tool by which i can actually show it to you better okay uh so maybe i can you know have a hinge here okay and maybe this is the platform that we have and then what i can do is i can have a spring which is attached to this right so i have a spring attached to this imagine this is attached and what i can do is i can connect a box at the front right let let me just take a small box and connect it with the spring now you know if you take this and move the box to and fro uh, let me just show you an illustration for this right maybe i can pull the box in this direction with some force okay then the box is going to move in this direction but the spring is going to pull it back right so if i say that this is something which is called the spring force or the restoring force so maybe i can write it down as fr so this is a very good example of shm you might have studied in your lower class that this is actually governed by something which we call as the hooke's law but we are going to come to that later because we are going to study shm in more detail now if we talk about something like a non shm that means you can talk about a motion which may be periodic which may be oscillatory but this is not following an shm motion what can be a good example for that so we can say that we have this platform and imagine you basically have a ball which will actually come down <laughs> so maybe i can have a ball and this is a very large one so let me just reduce the size so maybe i can have it and you know if this ball let me make a very simple illustration here if this ball you know comes down okay it's going to come down and jump okay so maybe i can take this it'll come down okay it'll jump and go up but it's not going to go to the same position eventually the jump or the height at which it goes is going to die off and finally it will be on the ground right so this is a periodic motion this is oscillatory in nature 
but this is not SHM. In SHM, we are having the to and fro motion about the mean position, which is this position. Okay. So that's the major difference. And these are some of the points that we should remember. Now, before I end with this short class, I'd like to give you a very important difference between vibration and oscillatory motion. So before we start, we can just go back and try to remember this entire division. So you can see this chart and you can kind of remember how can we divide motion into different fractions. Now, if I talk about something which is again very important and if it you have not, you know, thought about it, let me just uh, give you a food for thought that you can have a motion which can be vibrating in nature. So we basically have something which we call as vibration or we can have something which we call as oscillation. Now, what is the major difference between vibration and oscillation? Now, if I talk about vibration and you can give an example of a guitar string, okay? You have a guitar and you pull the string and you know that it's going to vibrate. That means it's going to move to and fro, right? If you have a guitar string, right? And if you are, you know, going to struck it, you see that you are going to have a to and fro motion, but the frequency of this to and fro motion is going to be very, very fast. But on the other hand, if you are talking about an oscillation, let's say, for example, a pendulum or maybe the string that we are talking about, this vibration or the motion from one end to the other end is going to be slower. Okay, so we can talk about, let's say, a pendulum here. So when we talk about pendulum, there is oscillation because the frequency is low. And when we are talking about a guitar, it's vibration because the frequency is high. Now, what do you mean by frequency okay, and time period? Maybe these two terms we can just revise quickly. I think it's important. So let's just revise these two factors. Uh, so if you're talking about the frequency, okay, you are given a certain time. And let's say it's one second. Okay. And you are having the oscillation. You are having the pendulum here. And the pendulum is oscillating from one end to the other end. Right. And maybe, you know, in one second, okay, it can actually oscillate twice. That means it can go from here to here, okay, and come back. And for doing that, it takes 0 0.5 seconds, right? So that means 0 0.5 seconds for one oscillation. It goes from here to here and comes back. So the point from where it starts, when it comes back again to that point, that we can consider as one oscillation. So in 0.5 seconds, it has one oscillation. So in one second, it's going to have two oscillations. So in general, we can say that's the frequency. And uh, what about time period? That is again connected, right? And I, I think you can make a guess for that. And you can see that when we are saying that it goes from one end to the other end and it comes back to the same position, how much time does it take? It takes 0 0.5 seconds. So that means the time period is 0 0.5 seconds. So it's very interesting that oscillation and time period are actually well connected and one is the reciprocal of other. So that means time period and frequency are inversely proportional. So we can just think about this example that I've written here. If you want to find out the time period, you can simply write it down as one divided by frequency was the frequency two. So I can take the frequency to be two. So that means this is 0 0.5. Okay, so unit would be second. And of course, frequency has a time period of inverse second, right? Or we can also call it as Hertz. So it's Hertz or inverse second. But, you know, I'll give you a food for thought. And you can, you know, if you just want to make a table out of it, okay? Maybe we can just uh, take certain values, right? And uh, <coughs> maybe we can make a table and then you can try to just rub it off. Okay. So you can write down maybe time on one side, the time period, and maybe the frequency on the 
other side okay you can write down the reverse also so maybe if the time period is 2 what is the frequency so that's just the reciprocal so frequency okay or sorry should write it down the other way we should write down the frequency and based on that we can find out what's the time period so frequency is let's say 2 okay so we can say the time period would be 0 0.5 frequency is 3 time period would be 1 by 3 okay frequency is 4 time period is 1 by 4 and what you can do is based on this you can actually plot a graph and see how does the nature of the graph looks like so i can give you that as a homework or maybe a food for thought and till next time i'm going to take your leave and in the next class we are going to discuss more on shm and circular motion that's all for today thank you